lighting the fires of liberty one heart at a time. Liberty is a concept that must live in our hearts. I mean, the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights are very important documents to our nation, but they are mere artifacts. Um, there is one thing that I agree with the President on, and that is that the Constitution is literally only a piece of paper. It only has whatever force of law we, the people, give it. It is not the Constitution's job to protect us. It is our job to protect the Constitution. And in order to do that, we must love liberty. We must love freedom. That fire, that passion, has to exist in our hearts. And my purpose in life is to inspire people to share and understand that same burning passion for liberty that I have and that the Founding Fathers had. And when I say lighting the fires of liberty one heart at a time, politics is not just local, it's personal. And I want everybody to feel a personal connection to the Constitution. It's not the Constitution, it is your Constitution. I'm criticized several times by people who suggest that it's not possible for me to talk to 300 million Americans individually. And I remind them that it's not necessary for me to talk to those 300 million people. And I point out that it only takes one match to start a forest fire. You know, these are the fires of liberty. And everybody that I talk to will hopefully become inspired. And they will become inspired to inspire others, that they will talk to their friends, their family, their co-workers, and share that passion for liberty, and continue the message, and so on, and so on. And I believe that that is happening. This presidential campaign has shown an interest in politics unprecedented in, in recent lifetimes. And people are becoming involved. They are becoming active. They are focusing on the issues in numbers far greater than they ever have um, in at least my recollection. And it is that passion for liberty, that political discourse, which brings these issues to mind and makes the United States a better place. So whether or not you see things as the way they should be right now. The universe is unfolding the way that it is supposed to, and people are continuing to light the fires of liberty, and I'm very, very optimistic for the future. The form of government that we have is a constitutional republic, and, and that may shock some people. I, I think that most of the people in the United States still believe that the United States is and is supposed to be a democracy. Democracy is a Greek word meaning rule by the many. Most people understand that the majority wins in a democracy. What they fail to realize is that the minority loses. The Founding Fathers loathed a democracy. They considered it mob rule, tyranny of the majority. And the reason for that in a democracy, you're allowed to vote on anything, and therefore, 51% of the people can vote to take away the property of 49%. They can vote to inhibit the rights of the 49%. They can enforce eminent domain and say that, well, for the greater good of the people, we're going to take your property and we're going to build an airport, or we're going to build a highway, we're going to build a trans-Texas corridor. And this is anathema to the Constitution. The only legitimate government exists to protect our lives, our liberty, and our private property. The United States is not a democracy, in spite of the fact that every president since Woodrow Wilson has stepped up to a microphone to announce that we want to make the world safe for democracy. This is a misleading lie. We are in an ideological war. If we pledge allegiance to the flag, we pledge allegiance to the republic for which it stands. Article 4, Section 4, Clause 1 of the Constitution states that the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government. 
And that means rule of law. The difference between a republic and a democracy is that in a republic, there are certain things that you are not allowed to vote on. You are not allowed to vote on my freedom of speech. You may not like what I have to say, but that is exactly what freedom of speech is all about. You are not allowed to vote on my freedom of religion. Freedom of religion is not limited to you know, Jewish, Catholic, or Protestant. It's freedom of religion. And so the Branch Davidians in Waco, I mean, were, were, were persecuted based on their religion and their fact that they were different than other people. When people ask me if I think that guns are dangerous, I say, no, I, if I thought guns were dangerous, I wouldn't have several of them. And then the next question was, well, couldn't we vote to take your guns away? And I admit that, yes, that you could take a vote, a unanimous vote that, you know, I'm crazy or dangerous and that you'd like to, you know, take my guns away. But my right to keep and bear arms is not subject to a vote. And so if you vote to take my guns away from me, you're going to have to take another vote to see which one of you is going to come and take them. Because I am going to resist. It is not your decision as to whether or not I am authorized to protect my life or the lives of my family. The difference between a right and a privilege, this is so fundamentally important. I teach an eight-hour class on the Constitution, and this is the, the fulcrum of the class. This is the axiom. I believe that all, all of our political problems in the United States are based on the fact that Americans do not understand the difference between rights and privileges. A right is defined in Black's Law Dictionary as something which is inherent in one person and incident upon another. The term inherent means a, a, dis, a defining characteristic. If I have a brick of lead, that brick of lead is heavy. I can't put the brick of lead in a vacuum and suck the heavy out. I can't put the brick of lead in a microwave and, you know, microwave it for a few minutes and have it come out light and fluffy. Heavy is lead. I mean, it is a defining characteristic. If it's not heavy, it's not lead. Your rights are inherent. Your rights are not granted to you by the Constitution. They are not given to you by the government. Your rights are in every molecule of your body. They, they are, you are born with your rights. No one can take your rights away. And you are, it's impossible for you to give your rights away any more than it's possible for you to put your, your nightmares into a paper bag and give them to some of your friends who are braver than you are. You can't give your dreams away. You can't give your rights away. They are inherent. And I really, I hate the phrase constitutional rights because it makes people believe that your rights are granted to you by the Constitution. And that's not true. If you believe that the Constitution gives you your rights, then it can be easily argued that the Constitution can take them away.